today I'm going to be discussing not only my favorite Mikkel Hanukkah film, but a film that I consider to be one of the greatest and most haunting thrillers of all time. That film is Caché, and I wanted to talk specifically about the climactic scene in its third act that has left such a long-lasting harrowing impact on me, and explain how and why the film was able to achieve the staggering level of emotional staying power with me. So, it's difficult to know where to begin when explaining what makes the scene and this film in general so impactful, but I think one of the more influential factors has to do with how incredibly authentic this film feels. There's never a moment in this film that feels phony or insistently cinematic. From start to finish, it all feels genuine and believable. The acting, the characters, the dialogue, the mystery, the conflicts, and the inner struggles you completely buy everything that the film is selling you, and as the film progresses into darker territory, you begin to feel more distressed and uncomfortable as it starts to give off the impression that you're watching something that you really shouldn't be. And like pretty much every Hanukkah film, it's able to achieve this level of authenticity through of course the way its dialogue is written and the actors are directed, but it's also his signature minimalist style of filmmaking that expresses such a realistic attitude. Again, like every Hanukkah film, it's compiled mostly of long stationary takes and subtle movements of painting and tracking. There's something about how Hanukkah goes about his minimalist style that makes the audience feel like an observer. And as the mystery builds and the suspense tightens, Hanukkah rewards your patience by eventually escalating everything into a scene like the extremely upsetting one we have here in Caché. But another crucial aspect that makes this scene so effective is what we witness from their previous encounter in terms of their character dynamic. At this point in the film, we know that the main character, Georgia, has done something awful to Majid when they were children. We don't know exactly what it is yet, but we know it's something he's desperately trying to hide, as demonstrated by his dishonest and selfish behavior throughout the film. But what makes this interaction such a tragedy is that Majid is yet again bullied and silenced by the same person he fell victim to as a child. It's history repeating itself again, but in a slightly different way, and Majid is still left without a voice. Even though Georgia knows he severely wronged Majid in the past, he refuses to speak to him like a human being and listen to anything he has to say. And what makes it even more heartbreaking is when we see the tape that shows us the aftermath of this interaction. Majid tries to hold his composure for a while, but eventually begins to cry and have an emotional breakdown. We're looking at a man that is in complete shambles and now without hope for any type of justice, closure, or reconciliation. There is also a strong central theme of classism revolving around all of this as well. Georgia is someone who grew up in an upper class environment and has had access to the best education and opportunities thrown at him left and right. This would explain the type of entitled and spoiled attitude that Georgia has in his attempts to hide from his wrongful past rather than confronting it in an honest way. Not saying that everybody who grows up rich lacks the amount of empathy and accountability that Georgia does, but it does have a tendency to mold an individual down that path. But getting back to this scene, it's a display of a wealthy and powerful figure that has dehumanized and silenced a lower class figure of society. I'll touch more on the class element here, but even though this scene is soul crushing and difficult to watch, in my opinion, it's not nearly as upsetting as this scene that I'm finally going to show you. After Georgia receives a phone call from Majid claiming that he wants to explain the tapes, he meets up with him at his apartment. And then this happens. Bon, qu'est-ce que ça veut dire? Monsieur toi. J'ai pas envie de m'asseoir, qu'est-ce que tu veux? Je vais te redire que je n'étais pas du tout au courant pour les cassettes. Et alors, c'est tout? Je t'ai demandé de venir parce que je voulais que tu sois présent. This scene left a pit in my stomach. This scene and this image has been stapled into my consciousness ever since my first watch. It's up there as the most harrowing event in a film that I've ever witnessed. Its abrupt nature makes it feel more visceral and shocking. That minimalist style of having a long stationary shot expresses that heavy layer of authenticity which obviously makes it feel incredibly realistic. And Georgia's shadow towering over Majid's dying body creates such a haunting and terrifying image. It gives off the symbolic impression that Georgia's darker inner self is responsible for his death. 
and the positioning of the camera is very similar to the camera angle we get earlier from the tape, which further emphasizes and expresses that observer fly on the wall perspective that, again, makes it seem like we're peeking in on something that we shouldn't be watching. Also, it's worth noting that the horrifying blood streak on the wall closely resembles the blood streak presented on the poster. And obviously, the context revolving around Majid's death is quite upsetting. Upsetting is really an understatement. It shows you how deeply affected he's always been by his relationship with Georgia and how hopeless he felt for any type of life worth living. It's also worth noting that Georgia never gave his wrongful past with Majid any thought until the cryptic drawings and tapes entered his life. He just buried it and continued to live his best life as if nothing ever happened. Majid was the opposite. He seemed like he wanted to forget but just never could. And the whole tape ordeal and his recent interactions with Georgia just pushed him over the edge. Georgia's reaction and the aftermath of it all adds a layer of anger and frustration to my emotions. Georgia doesn't call the police or an ambulance and instead just goes out to see a movie to create some type of alibi. And when he gets back home to his wife, played by Julia Binoche, he tells her about Majid's death and finally spills the beans on what he did to him in the past. Georges' family hired Majid's family as house workers. Majid was adopted by his family after Majid's family died in the act of genocide. So one day, Georgia made up a lie to Majid and told him that his father wanted him to kill a chicken for him. So Majid, being a grateful adopted child wanting to do anything to please the parents, chopped the chicken's head off with an axe. With Majid's face covered in blood, Georgia lied again and told his parents that Majid was trying to murder him with an axe. This led to Georgia's parents giving Majid up to an orphanage soon after. This would explain why Georgia attempted to hide the tape that had a chicken drawing on it. Because it was at that moment that he knew that the entire ordeal was going to be about him and what he's done in the past. It also explains his nightmare that we get earlier in the film. This nightmare is a combination of a first person perspective of his actual memory of the event and his current anxieties. So the actual truth of the event represented in his nightmare is Majid cutting off the chicken's head. But we then see him walk towards Georgia ready to strike. This is part of the nightmare that isn't true and purely reflects Georgia's anxiety and fear of his past wrongdoings. It's a symbolic gesture of feeling extremely intimidated by the fact that Majid could either murder him or murder his image. For lack of a better phrase, he's terrified and haunted by the fact that the chickens will come home to roost. Later on in the film, Georgia gets confronted at his place of work by Majid's son. And considering what happened to his father and what he knows about Georgia, I'd say that Majid's son was incredibly polite to Georgia. He starts by simply asking him if he could speak with him, and Georgia consistently refuses and rudely attempts to shrug him off. He's showing a gigantic lack of empathy towards the situation. Despite Majid's suicide, he still continues to act selfishly and wants to move on without taking a second to look in the mirror and take some accountability. He's so desperate to ignore the issue that he can't even give the victim's son a moment of time and provide any level of empathy and accountability. We then get an excellent shot as Majid's son refuses to take no for an answer and squeezes into the elevator with Georgie. This shot perfectly encapsulates the characters and context of the film. Georgie looks small and cowardly, hiding amongst the crowd just like how he hides from his past. Majid's son appears tall, powerful, and confident. I think the blocking displays the power dynamic between them in the current context. Even though Majid's son is of lower class, the information that he currently has on them can ruin his career and reputation in a matter of seconds, therefore always having dominating power over him. As they leave the elevator, Majid's son continues to confront Georgia about his past and the death of his father, but he continues to deflect and present himself with his fake holy image as if he's never done anything wrong. Georgia just ignores him and enters his workplace despite the threats made by Majid's son to make a scene. Majid's son opens the door and asserts his voice across the room in front of everybody, asking to speak with Georgia. This sends Georgia through the roof and ignites a heated interaction in the bathroom. It goes exactly how you would expect. Georgia is continuing to uphold his facade of an image and gaslight the son's issues with him to no end. Then Majid's son says something profound and insightful to one of the film's central themes. You have deprived my father of the possibility to receive a good education. So Orphelina, we learn the anger, but not really the politeness. And pourtant, my father has been educated. This is something that is further expressing the notion that class and respectability is something that you just can't buy. Despite Georgia depriving Majid of a privileged upbringing, Majid still turned out much more reasonable, genuine, and honest than Georgia. And that class and respectability was passed down to Majid's son as well. 
Georgia leaves the interaction. He actually calls out of work altogether. He goes home, takes some sleeping pills, closes the curtains, and simply just goes to sleep. Which is a perfect conclusion that represents the cowardly embodiment of a man that he is. Instead of facing the truth and taking accountability for his past wrongdoings that have deeply impacted people's lives, he does the exact opposite. Which is again, hiding from the world and just sleeping on it, pretending as if nothing ever happened. We get the second to last shot of the film, which simply shows the infamous and pivotal past event. This past event is Majid as a child being taken away from Georgia's privileged and luxurious upbringing and into a taxi heading towards the orphanage where he would then grow up. A truly heartbreaking scene. And to wrap it all up, we move on to the final shot of the film, which is one of the best artistic presentations of ambiguity I've ever seen in a film. It's a stationary shot of the students transitioning and roaming around between classes. At the left side of the screen, we see Majid's son and George's son interacting, which comes as a shock to the audience. But what makes this revelation beautiful is that it's not clear what we should take away from it. My personal interpretation is that it's revealing that they both conspire together against Georgia to expose his fake image. But I've heard some say that this could be the first time that they've actually interacted, and it's just the beginning of a plan that Majid's son has to get back at Georgia. I lean more towards the conspiracy angle because Georgia's son seemed to have a detached relationship with his father. There's also a segment where Georgia's son doesn't come home for a night and decides to stay at a friend's house without telling his parents with the intent to frighten them within the midst of all the cryptic messages. This could have been a strategy that Georgia's son and Majid's son discussed beforehand. But again, it's intentionally ambiguous which in my opinion makes the film an even more interesting and thought-provoking discussion piece than it already was. But those are all of my thoughts on Caché in regards to one of the most devastating scenes that I've ever witnessed. I intended to only talk briefly about the scene, but it's so difficult to not discuss all the context surrounding that scene that makes it more impactful and leaves such an impression on the viewer. I'd love to hear what everyone else thinks about Caché. Again, it's my personal favorite Hanukkah film, but I'd like to hear y'all's take on where it ranks amongst his filmography. Thank you so much for watching my analysis. If you really enjoyed it, please make sure to give that thumbs up and share it amongst your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be updated on more film-related content.